It's Anthony Samroff from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com and here's another one of my videos on my series of videos on how to make small talk, how to be a better conversationalist. You might have seen one of them before. Now, uh, today I want to talk about a really important skill. I know you might not know this, but see if you get into a conversation with someone and you don't like what you're hearing, you are actually allowed to change the subject, believe it or not. You are actually allowed to do that. It's something that people are terrified of doing, but um, actually a lot of the time when you're bored, the other person is secretly bored as well. So it would be a really good skill to master. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you a technique that you can use to do it without sounding rude. Um, so no one really wants to hear you talk dispassionately about anything. People don't just pick up on the words you're saying, they actually um, pick up on your mood as well, whether they're aware or not. We all kind of live in an atmosphere of vibes and they also don't want to feel like they're boring you. So um, if you're bored, they're probably bored. So I'm going to teach you a technique, but first I actually want to uh, give you a great, um, I want to read an excerpt from, I think it's from the book Nonviolent Communication, or it might just be from an interview with the author when he talked about a uh, situation he was in where he uh, confronted someone on the fact that he was bored, he took a risk, and it worked really well. And I really like that that example, so I'm going to read you it before I go into teaching you my technique. So um, someone asked him to share the story, and he says he's sitting around with a group of teachers, and they were all talking about what they did on holiday, uh, vacation, as they say in America. and Within 10 minutes, he felt like his energy had dropped really low, and he had no idea what everyone else was feeling or wanting, but we always kind of want to be sensitive to other people's, people's feelings, so we can be reluctant to do something like changing the subject. But after listening to a while, he finally got up the courage and said, excuse me, I'm a little bit impatient with the conversation because I'm not feeling a connect, as connected with you as I'd like to be. It would help me to know if you're enjoying the conversation. And all nine people stopped talking and looked at him, and to quote him, as if I'd just thrown a rat in the punch bowl. Yeah, so for about two minutes he thought he was going to die, but then he remembered to look at the feelings and needs being expressed through the silence, and he said, well, I guess you're all angry with me and you would have liked for me to have kept out of the conversation. And the moment he turned his attention to what they were feeling and needing, uh, he removed their power to demoralize him. In, in, his, in his own words. Uh, but the first person who spoke said, no, I'm not angry. I was just thinking about what you were saying. I was bored with the conversation as well. And he'd be, and this is the person that was doing most of the talking. So this is, comes back to something I said in a previous video. You never really know how socially anxious other people are around you as well. And sometimes um, they, uh, people will do a lot of talking when they're insecure. They just want to fill up all the space because they're shy. You think that shy people don't talk much, but sometimes one of the reasons why people talk too much is because they're because they're insecure, so they just fill up all the spaces. And I used to be a bit like that myself. So he said that it didn't surprise him that this person, um, because it said, said that he was bored with the conversation at all, because he's found that if he's bored, then the person who's doing the talking is probably equally bored. So they're communicating their state. So that, in his words, he says, that means we're not talking from life, we're acting out some socially learned habits. So each of the nine people then expressed the same feeling, the same feeling that he had, which was impatient, impatient discouragement, lifelessness and inertia. So everyone was too shy. It's like the emperor's new clothes. No one wants to point out that the elephant is wearing new, wearing no, the elephant, the emperor. No one wants to point out the elephant in the room, which is that the emperor has no clothes. But actually when someone did, a woman asked him, Marshall, why do we do this? Why do we sit around and bore each other? And I've talked about the interview conversation in these videos, you know, uh, when you kind of feel like you're the loss of the will to live because you can't get beyond an interview conversation to really connect with someone. So um, this person said, we get together every week and do this for each other. And he said, because we probably haven't learned to take the risk that I did, which is to pay attention to our vitality. Are we really getting what we want from life? 
Each moment is precious. So when our vitality is down, let's do something about it and wake up. Okay, so as I said, I've got a technique to teach you. And I just want to say that it's easy to forget that we are not the only ones that get uh, self-conscious or worry about what other people think about us. Um, so people people get into acting these asking these rote questions and um they're because they're fear they're afraid of being judged or being boring so they don't think about the outside the box they just ask you what do you do how did you get into that um and as you become a more confident communicator you begin to steward conversations around you more often and if you embrace the responsibility of stewarding a conversation if you become a leader in conversations, then people will really love you for it because they feel like they've got your back and you've got them covered so they can relax because they don't have to worry too much about how they're perceived because, well, you're, you've, you've got it covered, you're the leader, right? So, um, so that's something I've noticed. The more I take responsibility for my social interactions, the more people around relax and, it makes a really good impression on people. It makes you come across as assertive and confident. So, and another thing is, if there's specific things that you don't like talking about, like I spoke to, I, I was running one of my small talk workshops here in Glasgow, Scotland. I run these workshops to help people learn how to become better conversationalists. And there was a Italian participant who said he's sick and tired of being asked where he's from because of his heavy ass accent. He's so bored of that conversation. Lots of people hate talking about work. So um, <clears throat> here's how, so if you know what conversations that people always ask and you always try to get your way out of them, then you should have segues into things that you are interested in prepared. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that with two examples from my book, uh, How to Make Small Talk, which you can get in Amazon Kindle if you're interested. So it's not hard to do as you're going to proceed. So here, here I, I took some inspiration and I just said that this, the, the answer in this example is from Italy. So the question is, where are you from? And first you answer, you answer the question, you say, I'm from Italy. Then you prepare a segue. But I came here to study my master's in biotechnology. Then you say something about the segue, the new topic, the topic that you're interested in. I'm interested in the environmental side of it. You can turn vegetable peelings into carbon fiber rods, which can be made into bicycles or skateboards that are almost completely recycled. So here you have a uh, Italian guy who's sick of being asked where his accent is from, but he's really interested in ecology. So he gets on to talking about, um, you know, something that he's interested in, which is these, uh, Veg, fiber, these carbon fiber rods, which can be made into bicycles or skateboards, because because boom, he's out of the, he's out of having to talk about where he's from. So he's on to a topic that he loves. Now, there's the other thing is there's lots of avenues for discussion from this because the other person can talk about science, or they can talk about their degree, or they can talk about ecology, environmentalism, current events, something else that he heard that's about the environment. There's lots of avenues uh, to explore from that segue. It's not just got one point. He didn't just say, um, I'm from Italy, but I came here to study my master's in biotechnology. Although that would probably work, that would get him onto his master's, but it doesn't give as many options for conversation as the extended version of that does. So here's another example from someone that doesn't like talking about her job. What do you do? I'm in a call center with this company. Okay, I'm in a call center with this company. Right? There's a short answer to the question. Segway, we mostly take incoming calls. It pays the bills, but my favorite thing about the workday is coming home. So we mostly take incoming calls, but my favorite thing about the workday is coming home. You're letting the other person know that you don't like talking about your job. It's not interesting to you. You don't enjoy it. So, so they're probably not going to pry, right? That then she introduces the new topic and says, "I like to re I like to relax with my cats and my boyfriend. One of them's called Mexi and one of them's called Daisy. They get they don't get along too good. So sometimes I have to put one of them out. Usually it's him. So I didn't deliver that joke very well. 
uh, for my sins. But you see, she, she is clever because she thought ahead to, to make a joke there by saying, you know, they don't get along too good. So sometimes they need to put one of them out, implying that she'd have to put one of the cats out. But then the turnaround is she's speaking about her boyfriend. She's funnier than I am. She's a cool girl. So she's clever enough to have this segue. She knows she's going to be asked, what do you do all the time? And I'm probably going to do a video on how to uh, how to make talking about what you do more interesting because it is something that people ask you all the time. So it probably would be useful to do a video on that. Click the heart button if you think that's a good idea for a video. In fact, click the share button if you think that's a good idea for a video. So there's a funny response there. Now, if there's topics you reliably know that you hate talking about, you can prepare a segue, but it's also a great thing to do to get good at doing just in conversations in general. So if you want to get good at it, the best way to do it is just deliberately try to segue out of a conversation 12 times. You know the technique now, so you can just take this step out and try it 12 times. You can try it with people you know, they won't even know you're trying an exercise. In fact, if they look at you funny, you can just tell them, oh, I was, uh, I was trying an exercise there. You can try it even if you're not bored of the discussion. So the point is, with the characters in my examples, we're clever enough to prepare to prepare. So, and they gave answers that were entertaining and gave the opportunity for a conversation to develop further. And also, the other thing is, you know what they like talking about. So the second girl, she obviously likes her cats, or she can talk about her relationship. She loves her boyfriend. So, oh, how long have you been together? You know, someone might, might ask, or, you know, something like that. So she can get on to talking about something that she really likes to talk about. So my last point to make is just that, you know, you're the one that's responsible for your interactions in this world. No one can make your life fun and interesting. If you are not getting what you want, if you find it difficult to connect with people when you go out, then that's something that you could learn. I mean, I, I'm putting together a whole playlist on my YouTube channel. There's a whole playlist in this series on how to make small talk. So what, what I just suggest is you take up this responsibility because I didn't have the social skills I had now. Everything I'm teaching in these videos is stuff that I learned from first-hand experience. I decided that I didn't want to be as socially anxious as I was. And now even I see myself in these videos, and I come across as much more confident than even videos I made a few years ago. I mean, you can go back and see my old videos and watch. So you want to make your experience of the world one that's favorable to you. And if you choose to make your interactions more enjoyable, then they'll become more enjoyable. But first you need to know, to practice this technique, you actually need to know what you're interested in talking about. That is if you want to prepare segues into your subjects of interest. So what I'm going to recommend to you is um, yeah, after this video, take a think, grab a pen and paper, and to and write down, you know, find what what you're passionate about. If you're like uh, another thing, you can do is ask questions about these topics. So if you love reading, you know, start asking people if they've read some of your favorite books or what their favorite books are. If you like talking about books, if you like talking about movies, ask questions about that. So it might sound obvious. But you'd be amazed how many people just never think to do it. You know, questions are the answer. Sometimes if people ask a question about something, uh, that's a good cue that they might want to talk about it. So you need to socially calibrate and look at the environment around you. So I'm just checking if there's anything I wanted to include. So I just want to say that if you enjoyed this video, please hit the share button. And until next time, be yourself. But don't just be yourself, be yourself and love it.